And welcome to Business at its, bre uh, at its Best, presented by Ataraxis. For the next 30 minutes, we are here to make your company the best it can be. Our focus today is on advertising ethically. Now, you've seen the same going out of business sale advertised for months on end. Do you see the words free plastered all over only to realize the high cost? Advertising can be a powerful communication tool as long as it is honest and ethical. We're going to show you how to spot the unethical ads, the questions to ask to be sure your ads are honest, and why a good ad is so successful. For example, we have the story of one man who went to buy event tickets. The ad said kids could get in for $5. By the time he went to check out, that $5 kid's ticket actually cost $16. See the story later on in the show. A big thanks to our media partners, Local News 8's Now Channel in Idaho Falls and KTVB, Idaho's very own 24-7 in Twin Falls and Boise. We start today with the foundations for ethical advertising. Dr. Kanye Weber is an associate professor and department chair along with teaching marketing at NNU. Dr. Weber, thanks so much for being with us Thank today. You. Let's start off right at the top with talking about how these businesses cross the line into creating a deceptive advertisement. Well, what occurs is when business makes false or inaccurate information in their advertising, and it gives the consumer you know, a false impression about their product or service. And there's a major concern when, it, when we're talking about vulnerable populations such as children, or when these false statements actually harm competition, that's where we kind of run into that crossing the line. However, in advertising, you have what we refer to as puffery. Now, there's a difference. That's when there's just a mere exaggeration. So when companies use, um, you know, in their advertising, we're the best or the most, you know, we serve the best burgers, we have the friendliest service. I saw the best salad bar in yes. Idaho, and I went in, and it was about three feet long. It had lettuce and a couple of things on it. I thought, this is not the best. Yeah. Exactly, but that's seen as puffery. Now, when you use the word better and you're using a direct comparison, you have to be careful that you can substantiate those particular claims. Now, you mentioned children. What are some of those ethical concerns that a company needs to uh, be aware of as it thinks about marketing kids to kids? Well, first of all, children are a very attractive market because they have such a huge influence, a great influence on um, parents and what they buy. Most of us who have children under the age of 12 realize when we go out to dinner, we're interested in what is on the children's menu. However, children may not be able to differentiate between reality and fantasy, and they're very vulnerable. So advertisers need to be act more responsibly, um, especially as children are spending on the average five hours in media, whether it's television or online. When they get online, they may not know that, that there's consequences when they put personal information. So we need to protect that, you know. And be thinking that, proactively. Absolutely. You mentioned responsibility. Better Business Bureau is all about self-regulation. Mm -hmm. What are some of those entities out there that are helping these businesses be more accountable? Well, I think what you mentioned is self-regulation. People do not want to have, especially industry, more laws. And as you mentioned, Better Business Bureau actually helps mm -hmm. to what educate and form both consumers and businesses alike. I think there's a lot of businesses that want to act ethically and may be unaware of that. So if there is a dispute, the uh, National Advertising Division or the National Advertising Review Boards, they try to take care of the, these, these disputes early on. There are a number of resources out there for businesses yes. to check advertising and to be sure that they're being held accountable and they can Absolutely. do it themselves without regulation coming in. Absolutely. All right, Dr. Weber, thank you so much for being with us today. Excellent information mm -hmm. as we kick off our conversation today about ethics and advertising. Now, we hope you're watching today's show with a notepad and paper in hand. We're going to be offering you some resources to help be sure your advertising is honest and ethical. If you're advertising, here are three principles to follow. First, be truthful and accurate. It goes without saying, there's no need to try and pull the wool over somebody's eyes. Honesty is the quickest way to build trust. Then, be transparent, be proactive in offering information that helps your customers make informed decisions. And principle three deals with security. Treat customers' information with great care. Coming up later on Business at Its Best, see what happens when the price advertised triples by the time you check out. We're going to show you warning signs of a questionable ad. Also, a conversation with Buy Idaho's director about adopting the right mindset for advertising with ethics and integrity. You're watching Business at Its Best, presented by Ataraxis.
Welcome back. You've seen the Buy Idaho logo on advertising all over the state, but we want to go deeper than a logo as we continue our look at ethical advertising. Buy Idaho's Executive Director Sandy Anderson has significant experience in broadcast advertising and is current president for a local ad federation, and she joins us. Sandy, thanks so much for being with us Thank today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're talking about this idea of ethical advertising. What are the most pressing needs for a business as it considers, hey, you know, I want to do the right thing in the marketplace? You know, I think the big question that they need to ask themselves is, is this advertising statement a fact mm. or is it just my opinion about my business? You know, I think oftentimes that can be blurred and um, if it's substantiated and is truly fact, great, but uh, maybe they need to tweak the message so that they promote their message in a positive light and are still truthful in their advertising message. And I can hear a lot of these small business owners saying, you know what, that's great, but I'm busy. And these ad reps come in day after day to my shop. It's radio, television, newspaper, online. Guilty. Yeah, and they, <laughs> and, and they, they can be a tremendous resource for a small business owner. So what should the business owner be looking for in an ethical rep who's walking in the door? You know, I think integrity is the key to a, to a good advertising rep. Um, a business owner can take a look and say, is, is this uh, person in here to take my order? Are they in here to sell me a generic package? Or are they asking me questions about my business? Are they asking me my business goals, my competitors, my budget? Acting more as a coach through the process. Absolutely. Being more of a, a professional advisor, really, than an ad representative for a specific medium. Um, you know, I think business owners have oftentimes really big ideas about mm -hmm. advertising and uh, what they want their advertising to look like. And uh, it's important as a professional advisor to really kind of manage those expectations for a business and help coach them. Uh, you know, is, do you have the, the creative resources to do this campaign? Do you have the, the budget to do this campaign? And um, probably really a very hard question for a representative to ask themselves and the client, is my medium the best tool for delivering the advertising message? And that's where you need the, the rep to be honest. So Absolutely. What's the, what's, would that be one of the responsibilities then? We've got about just 20 seconds left. But is that one of the key responsibilities for an ad rep to be to be responsible in that area? Absolutely, and I think also you know to understand legally the ins and outs mm -hmm. of an advertising campaign. People want to use images; they want to use special music. Do you have the rights to use that that uh, element? And co-op advertising. That's a difficult concept and a lot of rules and regulations. Are they following those guidelines so that they're going to get reimbursed appropriately? Excellent questions to be aware of. Thank you so much, Sandy Anderson, by Idaho. Thank you. And folks can find more online as well. Thank you and have a great day. Well, our, we're focusing on ethics and advertising. A few terms that deserve some extra caution from you. If you are a customer and you see these words, ask some questions. If you're a business owner thinking about using these words, be ready to answer the questions. Our first term, going out of business. There are actually some legal requirements that if you advertise a going out of business sale, you've got to have a set date that the business is actually closing its doors. A going out of business sale that never ends or is just a play on words to close the doors and open under another name, it's an ethical. Next, if you use the word free, guess what? It's got to be free. No strings attached. And then finally, watch out for that word news or trying to make your ad look like the news. It's never a good idea. Well, the thought of uh, when we come back, we're show, our show continues on this theme of ethics in advertising. A great conversation to help your business be the best it can be. rotating door of salespeople and lengthy copy machine lease agreements. Fisher Document Systems is working to change the stereotypes through its offices in Idaho Falls, Twin Falls, and Boise. CEO Chris Taylor joins me. Chris, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So we've had some conversations over coffee about this idea of really changing the conversation about your industry and, and what you're doing. Tell me about some of the ways you're building trust as you have those conversations out and about, out and about in the community. Sure. Well, as you know, we're a 75-year-old company, and we're um, the last five or six years, we've really gone through a dramatic transformation. And that transformation came about primarily through internal, uh, looking at our culture of our company and building teamwork. So not being sales and service and operations, but building a team with a common goal of taking care of our customer. So we've taken that concept of teamwork and said, you know what, our customers are just part of our team. 
And that cultural uh, adoption of, a, of, a, of the customer being on our team really changed our perception of the customer. We're not just selling to them, we're partnering with them. You know, that's an overused term, partner, but when you think of us as a team, we become much more transparent, we do what's right for the customer. And you've been working with your people internally first to adopt that mindset. Absolutely, and then hiring to it. And hiring to it, which has been, big. we've been talking about how you staff the offices across the state. Yep, absolutely, and being patient to find the right people who have that customer-centric mentality and approach, um, it's tough to find. So when you focus on this advertising conversation as we are today, what are some of the rules that you live by to be sure that the ads for Fishers are, are ethical, honest, and really fulfill the mission that you are as a team? So ad advertising and marketing, at least my view in my industry, um, primarily takes place out in the field with the sales team. Now we do TV and radio and those types of things. So relative to those, for the most part, we focused on customer testimonials. And these aren't testimonials where we scripted it. We just found customers that were in love with Fishers, put them on radio, put them on TV, and it works out. So that's, um, you know, that's obviously, that's right from their mouths mm -hmm. and, uh, and not scripted and so forth. Um, I think where we get into challenges as an industry is out in the field, what salespeople say when representing our mm -hmm. industry. As you open this segment with um, the last person someone There's wants to stereotype. see coming through the door is a copy or salesperson and we want to make sure that uh, when we show up we, we, we look like friends, someone there to help them, not sell them something. So the, the premise of this show is to help businesses take something away and it, put it into place and what I'm hearing you talk about is first it has to start internally, re, uh, realistically, authentically with the culture of the company so that it can manifest itself in the, in the advertising. We have to be customer centric as a company and then that permeates itself through the organization into our sales team and our advertising and marketing with, um, again, with testimonials, customers saying good things about us versus us saying good things about us. So to, to help the folks who are watching the show out, what are some of the signs of an unethical ad that they should be watching for as they're bombarded by these messages? Sure. Um, I, I think it, it came up earlier in the segment when you, we make claims about the best at this or best at that. Mm. Um, we try and avoid that. For us in, in the field, in, in the marketing and advertising that happens as a part of our sales process, I think uh, when, when someone's talking about the competition, that's a, that's a sign of, of unethical representation of your company. We talk about what we do, what we can do for our customers. We avoid at all costs talking about our competition, and I think our, our, our industry is fraught with bashing the competition. Um, I think that's a telltale sign that so there's- So that's a, that's a red flag for folks. I think it should be, and it's, we train our team every day, do not talk about your competition. All right. Chris Taylor, CEO of Fishers, thanks so much for being with us today. Excellent information for every business out there about the culture and how to advertise honestly. Later on Business at Its Best, the ad says children's tickets, monster truck show, they're just five bucks. But when you go to check out, that child's ticket really costs 16. How to watch for the fine print. You're watching Business at Its Best, presented by Ataraxis. Welcome back. Ataraxis makes business at its best possible each week. The company takes care of the day-to-day -day work of HR, benefits, and payroll, so a business owner can focus on growing the business. Dave Lacani is with Ataraxis. He joins us today. And Dave, thanks so much for being with us. Thrilled to be here. We are talking about this idea of ethics in advertising, and we're going we're gonna to dive into some of the terms that are used. Let's talk about the difference between ethical advertising and persuasive advertising? It's a great question because done properly there is no difference between mm. the two terms. Ethical advertising is always persuasive and persuasive advertising is always ethical because it goes back... We're not back, twisting somebody's arm. In order. We're not twisting somebody's arm, we're not manipulating anyone, we're simply providing information that's psychologically compelling, that's emotionally compelling, that's open, honest, clear, and not deceptive. Okay, so what are some of the tools then that you use? I'm assuming testimonials, one way to, to use ethical Testimonials persuasive are, ads. Absolutely. Testimonials are a great way of using uh, persuasive advertising. But the challenge is oftentimes is that people uh, are not ethical in the way they gather testimonials or the way they deliver their testimonials. And so it's very important to use information that's complete and accurate, not composites, for example, of a lot of people, or not editing out certain segments of what people say so that you get just exactly what you want versus what they actually said. It needs and to be in context. It needs to be in context completely, right. And it should be, again, a real person that's identifiable and, and not a composite who just has a couple of initials or something like that, which a lot of companies still try and do, but it's really not ethical to do that. Again, transparency is the key and having people give their complete estimation of what 
the company is doing is the best way of using that testimonial. And they're very, comp they're very compelling and persuasive too because we get to use the secondary medium, particularly on television, of being able to see the body language of the person and everything else and decide for ourselves is this person really being truthful and honest. And the unethical testimonials, they're really damaging to the consumer. You think, you know, I think whenever I see some glowing remark about how a product changed my life and mm -hmm. it's followed by two initials, right. I discount it immediately. It's Absolutely. not believable. It's not believable and you can usually tell them too because they have ellipses on both ends yes. and they're, they're just not really believable and or they were taken so far out of context that they're just not really something that that person would have said and oftentimes on the back side of that testimonial somebody who's very unsatisfied that they're being quoted in that way. Let's talk about some of the warning signs and how people protect themselves from the mm -hmm. unethical advertising. You know, uh, online this is particularly a big issue because people uh, oftentimes are bombarded with information and we've all sort of got to this place where we scan information very quickly and we tend to believe that if it comes from a trusted source, somebody forwarded us an email or something like that, that it must be true. But whole industries have popped up around trying to detect the truth from the false. And so uh, industries like, uh, or websites like Snopes.com, mm -hmm. S-N-O-P-E-S, uh, exposes a lot of time things that are truthful or not truthful, but oftentimes these things start out as large social memes. This thing is true, and then the unethical advertisers will attach to that and say, you know, we know that this thing is true based on what we've seen online, and as a result of that, we've now created this ultimate product that will do all of these things, which is really as based on, on all kinds of network news programs. Absolutely, yeah. which is not even, you know, now that anyone can say they're a radio producer, a television producer by simply being on YouTube or blog talk radio, these people present themselves as being the ultimate expert. So it's a difference between you saying I'm a, a television broadcaster who has a legitimate show and who has been in the broadcast media for a long time versus someone who just says all of a sudden, I'm going to create this thing and say that I'm this person. Uh, in book sales, we see this a lot. Somebody writes a book and, and they instantly say because they sold two copies of the book that it was an instant bestseller. Well, it was a bestseller to their mom and their brother. To two people. To yeah. two people, right? And it's not really accurate. So again, it's the transparency of advertising with the advertisers driving that transparency that makes it very ethical, open, honest, and also incredibly persuasive. So speaking of book authors, yeah. uh, you've written the book, Persuasion, The Art of Getting What You Want. Right. Uh, and hence the reason that you're on this show talking about this idea of ethical mm -hmm. advertising. And, and we just want to want to capitalize on this idea that ethical advertising is most appropriate and most persuasive. It absolutely is because everybody has been manipulated at some point in their life and once they've been manipulated they'll always recognize it again and they know what it is. They also know what it's like when somebody provides them with accurate information that they can make a great decision on and that they can use to make a good decision about a company or a person that they want to do business with. But those people who manipulate, we, we never forget those people. And then we become highly skeptical. And that's what's happened in our society generally, is that people have become much more skeptical of advertising because of a lot of this advertising that's unethical. So the best thing advertisers can do is take back the responsibility of being ethical and make your advertising more Self, effective because self of Self-regulation. All right, once again, if you're looking for the title of the book, it is Persuasion, The Art of Getting What You Want. Dave Lacani, the author, with us today, also from Adaraxis. Thanks so much for that terrific information as we improve our business Thank you. and self-regulate. Well, Better Business Bureau has a number of resources to help you advertise ethically. Check out our website at bbb.org. Also, you can go to Facebook, search for BBB Snake River Region and click like. We check in on the Advertising Police next on Business at its Best. BBB's ad review programs help business get the most out of every ad dollar spent. See the good and the bad up next. Welcome back to Business at its Best. A bit of trivia, Better Business Bureau started 100 years ago to help businesses advertise honestly. We're still doing the good work every day. We review hundreds of ads, print, radio, television, and online. Here's a look inside that process. Anyone can um, bring an advertisement to our attention and we'll send it to the company and ask them for more information or substantiation of the, of the advertisement. BBB monitors advertising activities and tracks potential violations of trust. Well, we're not an enforcement agency, um, so all we do is we will put it in their reliability report. Um, we go by the BBB Code of Advertising as well as the Attorney General's Code of Adver their Advertising Standards. Uh, if it's in a newspaper, sometimes the newspaper directly contacts us and asks us what they need to do to change it. When we get a complaint, we look to see if um, there is 
any type of uh, pricing if there's anything referring to that pricing like the small print which is right here that describes that it excludes the front row um, there's no double discounts and there's additional fees that may apply businesses need to be specific when offering sales credit warranties and testimonials providing the necessary information empowers buyers and encourages them to be loyal customers so all we do is we will put it in their reliability report so a consumer can show what advertisements what they're advertising and if they've responded or have changed some of their advertising then of course we can always refer it to the attorney general's office they need to have contact information in case the customer has any questions whatsoever um, because also on this website there's going to be more of these more information concerning like terms and conditions and it might state some of these additional fees that may apply. Advertisements that are untrue, misleading, deceptive, fraudulent, falsely disparaging of competitors or insincere offers to sell shall not be used. We're looking at a lot of ads every day. Before we leave you, a few reminders from today's show to help you advertise honestly. First, the three principles to follow. Be truthful and accurate. It goes without saying, the honest, honesty is the quickest way to build trust. Also, be transparent. When you're proactive in offering information that helps your customers make informed decisions, you go a long way to, once again, building trust. Principle three deals with security. Treat your customer's information with great care. Then, a few terms to de that deserve extra caution. If you're a customer and you see these words, ask some questions. If you're a business owner thinking about using these words, be ready to answer the questions. The first term, going out of business. Then, the word free. Finally, don't make it look like news. That does it for this edition of Business at its Best. Have a wonderful week.